Good afternoon everyone. Let us discuss on the topic causes for the violation of educational rights of women. So before going to the causes, let us see what is education. Education is one of the most important fundamental needs of every human being in which knowledge, skills and habits of people are transferred from one generation to the next generation. Education means the wealth of knowledge. Education is important for everyone and especially for girls and women. It is the key to economic development and the enjoyment of many other human rights. It provides a means through which all people can become aware of their rights and responsibilities, which is an essential tool for achieving the goals of equality and peace. The 1960 UNESCO Convention Against Discrimination in Education defines education in Article 1, Clause 2 as, I quote, all types and levels of education, including access to education, the standard and quality of education and the conditions under which it is given." Unquote. The right to education is a fundamental human right. It is an important tool in improving the quality of life and further passing on the social, cultural, spiritual and philosophical values of the particular community. come to the right to education under the Constitution of India. The preamble to the Constitution guarantees to all citizens social, economic and the political justice and equal opportunity to all to develop so as to lead a dignified and decent life. By the 42nd Amendment Act of the Constitution, education has been added in the concurrent list but now the implementation of education policies becomes the joint responsibility of the center and the state. Then Article 41 of the Constitution states the right to work, right to education and right to public assistance in certain cases. It states that the state shall, within the limits of its economic capacity and development, make effective provision for securing the right to work to education and to public assistance in case of unemployment, all as sickness and disablement, and in other cases of undeserved want. Article 45 provides for free and compulsory education for all children until they complete the age of 14 years. Article 46 also directs the state to promote with special care the educational and economic interests of the weaker sections of the people and in particular of the settled caste and settled tribes and shall protect them from social injustice and all forms of exploitation. Let's see some of the international perspective. Globally, education is also being regarded as a fundamental human rights and is essential for the exercise of all the other human rights. Several international human rights documents have recognized the right to education as an inalienable right. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights, 1948, in its Article 26, proclaims that, I quote, everyone has the right to education, education shall be free, at least in the elementary and fundamental stages. Elementary education shall be compulsory, it shall promote understanding, tolerance and friendship among racial or religious groups, unquote. The right to education has been enshrined in a range of international conventions including the International Covenant on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights, 
1966 ICESCR. The right to education has been reaffirmed in the 1960 UNESCO Convention Against Discrimination in Education, the 1981 Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women and the 2006 Convention on the Rights of the Person with Disabilities. Article 10 of the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women provides that women shall be provided same conditions for careers and vocational guidance as to that of men. They shall be provided equality in preschool, general, technical, professional and higher technical education as well as in all types of vocational training. It was after the assassination attempt on Malala Yousafzai, a student and a human rights activist by the Taliban that UN Special Envoy for Global Education Gordon Brown launched a UN petition in Yousafzai's name and demanded that all children worldwide should be in school by the end of 2015. This led to the ratification of right to education in many countries, its first rights to education bill in countries like Pakistan. India has also ratified various international conventions and human rights instruments committing to secure equal rights of women. Key among them is the ratification of the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, SEDO, in 1993. Let's come to the judicial response. When the Constitution was adopted in 1950, 70% of the citizens of the country were illiterate. The framers of the constitution hoped to achieve 100% literacy within a period of 10 years. So various provisions like Article 19, Clause 1, Subclause A, Article 21, Article 41, Article 45, etc. were included which cannot be achieved without education. Laws are enacted, but there needs to be proper implementation of these laws. The judiciary is no longer restricted to the mere interpretation of laws, but has interpreted the provisions of the constitution to meet the changing needs in the society. In Ms. Mohini Jain v. State of Karnataka, AR 1992, Supreme Court 2100, the court held that the right to education is a fundamental right which directly flows from the right to life as enshrined in Article 21 of the Constitution. Then thereafter, in Superstar Education Society versus State of Maharashtra, 2008, Volume 3, Supreme Court Cases 315, the court has imposed a duty upon the states to impart education and particularly primary education having regard of the fact that the right to education is a fundamental right within the meaning of Article 21 of the Constitution. So, it was the judiciary which has transformed the right to education as an enforceable right of the citizens and led the legislature to enact laws in this regard and Article 21A has been inserted in the Constitution by the 86th Amendment which makes primary education a fundamental right for all children up to 14 years. Now let's see the causes for the violation of educational rights of women. Despite various national and international instruments or the mechanisms for the educational rights, especially for girls and women, there still exists considerable discrimination against women, primarily because women and girls face a multitude of constraints imposed by society and not by law 
and India is not an exception to it. Some of the major causes for the violation of educational rights of women are gender discrimination, early marriage or child marriage, economic burden, lack of government initiatives, internal conflict, etc. Gender discrimination. Gender discrimination against women are contrary to fundamental human rights, equity, natural justice and good governance. It affects girls and women throughout their lifetime and they are often the ones that suffer the most. Cultural and social belief, attitudes and practices prevent girls from benefiting the educational opportunities to the same extent as boys. There is often a powerful economic and social rationale for investing in the education of sons rather than daughters, as daughters are perceived to be less valuable ones and less likely to abide by the will of the father, brother or husband. Girls are often forced to stay at home and do the housekeeping. So the literacy rates and school enrollment rates for girls and women is often much lower than those of boys and men. Now come to the second point, early marriage or child marriage. Another main cause for the violation of educational rights is of child marriage or the early marriage. Child marriage is predominantly seen in poverty stricken areas. Early marriage keeps the girls and their children trapped in a vicious cycle of discrimination. Too often marriage is seen as a higher priority than education in our society and the girls who are married are excluded from schools by their parents, in-laws and husbands. Child marriage denies children, especially girls, their basic human rights as enshrined in the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. In developing countries, one girl out of three is married before they turn 18. The United Nations has recognized child marriage as a barrier to the right to education. Then come to the third point, violence against girls in schools. Another key issue concerning right to education is the persisting violence against girls. Tragically, this issue is a daily routine for many girls around the world. Violence against girls is not only direct infringement of human rights, but it plays an important role in denying girls the right to access education and this is one of the major causes in increasing dropout rate among girls. Violence includes rape, sexual harassment, physical and psychological intimidation, teasing and threats on the way to school itself, and is perpetuated by teachers, parents, persons of perceived authority, and fellow students. The existence of violence against girls are hard to find as it remains unreported, misunderstood and largely unaddressed. Now let's come to the fourth point that is economic burden. The poor parents cannot afford the direct cost of sending all children to school. They require payment of various kinds of fees like charges for books, stationery, examination fees, uniforms, school management, informal tips to teachers, etc. So, the household poverty and the need to prioritize reduce educational opportunity for girls because they are the first to suffer. Girls' labor is frequently used to substitute for their mothers, for example, taking care of the siblings. The loss of girls' labor during school hour thus has a detrimental impact on such families' ability to raise their household income, either through food production or waste labor. Now, 
Let's see the fifth point that is the lack of government initiatives. The government has initiated many projects, schemes either to be sponsored by the central or the state government to improve the literacy rate of women in India like the Saksar Bharat Mission for Female Literacy, Sarva Siksha Aviyan, etc. Despite such government initiatives, a lot of work still needs to be done. Illiteracy still exists and about one third of India's population is still functionally illiterate and about 50% of the entire adult female population cannot read and write. There is limited number of female teachers in both primary and secondary schools which is a major constraint for girls' education. But the government has failed to guarantee the equal rights of women in teaching, failed to challenge cultural prejudice against female teachers, and often failed to develop effective incentives to encourage female teachers to work in poor and rural areas. Now let's see the last point that is the internal conflict or disturbances. Internal conflict have been a permanent feature on the Asian political landscape since 1945, of which post-colonial India is no exception. Currently, most of the states in the northeastern regions of India are affected by some form of conflict, except for Arunachal Pradesh, Mizoram and Sikkim, in which the situation is at the moment relatively stable. In such situations of conflict, there occurs many attacks on the educational institutions and causes disturbances in educating the children in such conflicted areas. These attacks violate the rights of the child, especially the girls. The girls are being molested and raped both by the armed forces and by the military forces as part of their warfare and are used as a weapon in war. In such environment of violence and fear, the quality of children's education is diminished. In conclusion, I would like to say the right to education being a fundamental right directly flows from right to life enshrined in Article 21 of the Constitution. Education is as basic as right to food, clothing and shelter. And without education, there will be no fulfillment of socio, cultural and economic rights and cannot lead a dignified and decent life. So, education is a powerful tool by which economically and socially marginalized adults and children can lift themselves out of poverty and participate fully as citizens. Education is very important in today's world and especially for the empowerment of girls. Hence, it is the government to take initiatives to fulfill the provisions of the constitution, particularly fundamental rights and directive principles of state policy. And India being a high contracting party to various international conventions, it is the obligation of the state to activate the process of universalization of right to education in India. So education is power, educate a girl and you empower a woman, a family, a community, a nation and the world. Thank you.